Hello everybody and welcome to another one of our leadership training videos. In these leadership training videos, what I do is I take you over a few minutes through my ideas and thoughts on what it takes to be an effective leader, what the leadership traits, qualities and skills are that you need, all through my own eyes, through my own 35 years experience of leading, training and developing teams throughout Europe, Middle East and Africa. My name is Chris Igwe. Welcome to this. I hope that it resonates with you. If it does, please feel free to like, share, comment, and of course, subscribe to the channel when other videos will become available and you know what they are and you can look back on the previous ones as well. So today we're going to talk about the three S's, the three S's of leadership. Now, I'm not going to say this is an exhaustive one. I normally like to take three, but sometimes there are more. Sometimes people come up with other ideas as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Again, these are my own experiences and my own thoughts. So what are your S's? Well, as you think that through, let's start with mine. And the first S that I've put out there as a quality of leadership and which we all require as leaders is to be strong, to be strong. I've also put in there a variation, which is strength of character. You have to have character, but that's a C. So we'll stay with S. Strong, strength, those are the things that you need and what do I mean by that? Well, there are three main areas, if you like, of strength. You have to have physical strength. And I don't mean muscles and you know, physically being you know, the champion of the world, male or female. I mean that you are healthy. You eat well, you sleep well, do exercise, all the sort of things that keep you physically in shape and physically strong. And obviously, if you have health challenges, that you are being dealt with accordingly and looking through those as well. So not in any, in any way um, assuming that is not the case, but you need to be in your best physical frame whenever you possibly can as a leader. Equally important is emotional. Now, I don't mean that you're gonna have a nervous breakdown or anything like that, but we all go through ups and downs in our careers and our lives. We come to the office, We've got issues at home, whether they're marital, whether they're children, whether they're parents, just life, stuff happens. So how are you coping with that in your own world? And does that get across to the team that you are leading? Because if it does, then you are not strong because it's getting through, they're seeing it. Now, yes, you could maybe share it with a few people, your PA, your EA, people you trust and like and whatever, there's an opportunity there, but that's a choice. But emotionally, you've got to be in the right place. Equally, maybe the pressures of work are getting to you. So not only is it impacting you physically, but emotionally as well, um, depending on what your targets, your objectives are for you and the team. And of course, mentally. So is your mental frame of mind, is your attitude one of, I can do this, I can succeed, I will succeed. Failure is not an option. I'm gonna climb that mountain, I don't care what it takes. I'm going up there and I'm taking my team with me because we're gonna plant that flag on the top of the hill or the mountain. We're gonna work through rain, sleet, snow, whatever it takes. Is that how you are mentally prepared? Because that's what you will need to be a successful leader. So S, in this case, strong. The next one is the word survivor. Now in some cases you might think, well, that's a bit that's a bit rough, that's a bit tough. But believe me, especially business today, if you're in a corporate world or you're an entre entrepreneur and you run your own business, nobody's giving you handouts. As an entrepreneur, which I am and I have been for a long time, nobody's rushing to my door to give me business. And if they are, of which I'm grateful, and in, in some cases that does happen, but I've had over the decades my own prospect list, my own targets, those who I go after the companies I'm interested in working with. Sometimes it takes decades to become a client. Sometimes it happens more quickly. So you'll go through these battering moments backwards and forwards and you have to be a survivor because you will encounter failure. There's no two ways about it. Whether you're in the corporate world or you're an entrepreneur, running your own business, wherever you happen to be in the scale, you will have failure. Failure could be any of those three and others. Could be 
personal, your personal situation. Like I said before, you know, maybe you've got a, a marital situation or a struggle or with children or with parents. It could be a personal situation that has nothing to do with work and you have to work through that to get through that personal situation before it impacts the rest of the business. It may be the company. You're running a company, you're leading it, and there's a challenge, or maybe there's a failure, or whatever, you lose a big contract, you don't get a contract. Maybe just the ups and downs, key people leaving. What, what are they? So there'll be failures. And then of course, in the team itself, that you're running or managing, there'll be some tough moments, times when you need to pick yourself up because maybe key members leave, or maybe the key person you wanted to hire doesn't leave. Maybe a job wasn't done right, let alone on time but you've still got to pull yourself up. Could be, and that again in the world of businesses, whether corporate or entrepreneurial in particular, there's a very high rate of risk of bankruptcy or um, other financial challenges. So you'd have heard of many groups, individuals, some who are hugely successful today, who've gone through their own bankruptcy because they've put everything on the line, which is why I call it survivor. And it's not a light word, it's an important word to consider. Perhaps it's a case of being fired or demoted. People are fired for whatever reason, economical reasons, maybe their salary is too great, they need to reduce it in today's environment, or maybe just somebody didn't like you and they decided it was time for you to, to move on. So being fired or demoted and then coming back with absolute strength is key to succeeding. Maybe finally you've been passed up for promotion. Simple as that. You've worked incredibly hard for the company for months, years, decades, and you get passed up. Maybe for the first time, maybe for another time. And I say that because as a leader, yeah, you could be, maybe there's a board position that was coming up and you weren't given that position despite the fact that you were the best. Or even more difficult, someone else was brought in from the, from the outside as opposed to giving that role to you. So survivor is important. And the third and final one is service. And I did equally a whole leadership training video on the servant leader. So leadership as a service, which is very important for all of us. And what does that mean in terms of service? Well, you're there to support others. You are there to help others. And in so doing, you want to train and develop them because as leaders, we want our team, our individuals, especially the better ones, the brighter ones, the best ones, to grow. That is our commitment to them, is to train and develop them. And a byproduct, of course, of that is to nurture and grow them. They are nurtured and grown and they succeed, then that is credit to you because you have done this, it may be even your own personal time, taking them on projects, traveling with you, learning what you do. Maybe you spend even more time with them at weekends, helping them understand more of what it is they need to do to grow. So supporting others, training and developing, nurturing and growing, that is all part of service to other people. So not for you specifically, although by proxy, you benefit from that. And then I thought, well, to help you with your own questions, maybe another couple, I did say three eyes, but here are a couple of others. Again, sacrifice, which I've spoken about in a previous leadership training video, you may want to look at that, but there could also be sensitive sensitivity. So leadership requires sensitivity. Now, there are some who would argue that sensitivity has no place in leadership. Well, it does. I'm not talking about being sensitive per se, where anything everybody says is going to impact you. I mean, being sensitive to what is going on around you. So being aware, being cognizant, there are things happening in the corporate world with the external world as well and with your own team. So being sensitive to all that's going on and all the moving parts, there is a requirement for sensitivity. And then of course, I end with, with a question there for you, which is if none of these resonate, which I would be surprised at, maybe you have other S's that you wanna bring. I have another couple that I was thinking of as well but those are the ones that I've put out there at the moment. So I hope that this has resonated with you, left you with some thoughts and ideas. And if it has, please feel free to like, share or comment. And more importantly, subscribe to the channel so you know when other videos are becoming available. And all I can say in the meantime is thanks for watching and listening. 
and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thank you.